I'm the developer of Linguistic Genomics, which was the first platform on which you could determine the intent of communication rather than the literal artifact of communication. But we've also used that technology for a number of other applications in defense and intelligence and finance. And most notably, in the early 2000s, my company was responsible for bringing down what was at the time one of the largest tax frauds in U.S. history. We maintained a series of inquiries into every individual, every organization, and every company that is involved in anything that either blurs the line of biological and chemical weapons or crosses that line in any of 168 countries. In 1999, there were a million patents digitized by IBM. And those million patents were the first time human innovation had been put into an electronic digital searchable format. We took that information and we did a very simple exercise using our linguistic genomics technology. I made the horrific assessment that approximately one third of all patents filed in the United States were functional forgeries, meaning that while they had linguistic variations, they actually covered the same subject matter. In 1999, patents on coronavirus started showing up. And thus began the rabbit trail. March 2003, panic grips Hong Kong as a deadly new virus sweeps through the city. In 2003, the Center for Disease Control saw the possibility of a gold strike. And that was the coronavirus outbreak that happened in Asia. They saw that a virus they knew could be easily manipulated was something that was very valuable, and in 2003, they sought to patent it. And they made sure that they controlled the proprietary rights to the disease, to the virus, and to its detection, and all of the measurement of it. We know that Anthony Fauci, that Ralph Barrick, that the Center for Disease Control, and the laundry list of people who wanted to take credit for inventing coronavirus, were at the hub of this story. From 2003 to 2018, they controlled 100% of the cash flow that built the empire around the industrial complex of coronavirus. The World Health Organization has officially named the, the novel coronavirus, coronavirus the sweeping novel coronavirus the country. Outbreak. Outbreak. The, the, coronavirus the World Health Organization, coronavirus is has declared a pandemic. an coronavirus, international a public health pandemic. emergency. While we know that the coronavirus manipulation started with Dr. Ralph Barrick in 1999. The major characteristics of SARS, MERS, and SARS coronavirus too, it's a good way for you. Ralph Barrick is the researcher at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, who's famous for his chimeric coronavirus research. In 2002, there was a recognition that the coronavirus was seen as an exploitable mechanism for both good and ill. On April the 25th, 2003, the U.S. Center for Disease Control filed a patent on the coronavirus transmitted to humans. Under 35 U.S. Code Section 101, nature is prohibited from being patented. Either SARS coronavirus was manufactured, therefore making a patent on it legal, or it was natural therefore making a patent on it illegal. If it was manufactured, it was a violation of biological and chemical weapons, treaties and laws. If it was natural, filing a patent on it was illegal. In either outcome, both are illegal. In the spring of 2007, the CDC filed a petition with the patent office to keep their application confidential and private. They actually filed patents on not only the virus, but they also filed patents on its detection and a kit to measure it. Because of that CDC patent, they had the ability to control who was authorized and who was not authorized to make independent inquiries into coronavirus. You cannot look at the virus, you cannot measure it, you cannot develop a test kit for it. And by ultimately receiving the patents that constrained anyone from using it, they had the means, they had the motive, and most of all, they had the monetary gain from turning coronavirus from a pathogen 
to profit. Developing and owning a coronavirus vaccine has become a biotech arms race with political overtones. This vaccine gold rush is starting to bother me. Gold rush. Hmm. Let's keep that in mind. And so somewhere between 2012 and 2013, something happened. The federal funding for research that was feeding into places like Harvard, Emory, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, that funding suddenly became impaired by something that happened at the NIH, where the NIH got this little tiny moment of clarity and said, I think something we're doing is wrong. And in 2013, the NIH said, gain of function research on coronavirus should be suspended. The National Institutes of Health had a moral and social and potentially legal reason to object to research. But the letters that were sent to the researchers essentially said, you are receiving notice that we're telling you to stop. And now on the bottom of the page, we're going to clarify what stop means. Keep going. But when the heat gets hot in 2014 and 15, what do you do? You offshore the research. You fund the Wuhan Institute of Virology to do the stuff that sounds like it's getting a little edgy with respect to its morality and legality. But do you do it straightway? No. You run the money through a series of cover organizations to make it look like you're funding a U.S. operation, which then subcontracts with the Wuhan Institute of Virology. The U.S. could say, China did it. China could say, the U.S. did it. And the cool thing is, both of them are almost telling the truth. 